Hello and welcome again to this class. Today we'll be talking about ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. We'll be trying to add data into Map Viewer and we'll be making a map that we can save and share. Let's get started with it. So let's go to Map. It takes us to the Map Viewer. And you might have already known that there are several options available in the toolbar. Let's go to Hawaii because that's the data we'll be working on. If you search Hawaii in the search field, it takes it gives us all those all these options. We can select Hawaii USA and it takes us to, to the islands of Hawaii. Here we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right. Next, let's look at the data that's available with this course. This is how the data looks like. So we have the name, address, city, state, and zip code. I believe these are the emergency centers in Hawaii and we'll be plotting this in ArcGIS Online and make a map out of it. <clears throat> so let's go get started. Let me minimize this map and let's let me go to add. As you can see, there are several options. We'll be talking about them in later classes, but because the file that I showed you was a CSV file. CSV stands for comma separated values and it's a file that Microsoft Excel recognizes and is also mostly popular with mapping applications and any other applications also. So let me go to add layer from file because the, the CSV is stored in my local drive. So when I go to add layer by file, it, let, it gives me an option to choose file. I can go to choose file and let me go to desktop. That's where my file is and bring it to the Access online map viewer. I'll import the layer. Now here is the fun part. Access online is smart enough to know that the city address and name field and the object ID field that we used it, it differentiates between object ID and name and address and city. It already knows that that address and city are location field and name and object ID are not. If you look back at the spreadsheet, we have address, we have city and state, and we have zip. So ArcGIS Online already knows that these are the location fields and object ID, name, and phone are not. So, so if I go to address or places option, it's already been categorized. Address is in address, city is in city, state state, zip is zip. See so if we had location parameters based on coordinates, long and lat, I would go to coordinates and I would match the field name with the location field. But in this case, I would go to address or places and they're already matched. And all I have to do is add layer. Click on add layer, it updates the item. And here we go. These are all the points. Now, See if we wanted to categorize all these schools by their name, we can say Unix symbols. And then it gives you can go into the option and you can see that the first school is red, the second school is blue, the third school is green. But if we wanted to give all these schools the same color. We could go to location, single symbol, and we'll have the option to go to symbols and change the symbol as we like. We can give it a blue color. We can give all the schools a diamond color, or we can go and say, go to national park services. And because these are emergency shelters, I can go to something like, uh, something like this and I can increase the symbol size and I can hit 
Okay. So as you can see, all the symbols got the same icon. It's ready to be used, these symbols. Now, the other thing I would like to talk about here is when you click on the symbols, you can see the pop-up that has all the information about that particular spot. So this is Hono Kahai and Intermediate School. There's another school. There's another school here. And these are all the attributes. But say you wanted to keep the phone number private. I would hit done and then I would go here and then I would go to configure pop-up and I could go to configure attributes and hide the phone number from display. I would hit OK, hit OK once again and now when you click on the school the phone number is gone. So you can configure the pop-up by going here. And there are several options available. Uh, now to get back to the symbolization, I would go to this, change style. And we have already done location, we have already done the, um, the unique symbol. Now say I wanted to create a heat map. I wanted to create a map where it shows me where where all the shelters are located densely and where all the locations are sparsely located. I could go to the heat map and I could go to the options but you can already see that the more yellowish color means that there are more shelters densely located. And I can always play around with this color um, to show the the difference in color in the heat map and if I like that I can just hit OK but I like the one that was already already there which was the the unique symbol um, based on the name so I can go here select name and I would go to location and I want something different this time so I would go here and uh, select this, hit OK, increase the symbol a little bit, hit OK, hit OK. So we are done with the symbolization. Now that was how we would add the file that we already have in the computer. Now moving forward, let's see if we can add something from ArcGIS Online. If we, because these are emergency shelters, let's see if we can find some hazardous information, some information about volcano or things like that. So I'd go to search for layers and in the my content I would go to ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Online has this vast resource of information. I would just search for Hawaii, let's see what pops up and there are, look at that, we have Hawaii emergency shelters, it's probably the same data that I'm using. There's a lava flow hazard zone. So let's go ahead and add that in our map. It's already been added on the map as you can see. But we have Hawaii lava flow hazard zone on top of emergency shelters. So it's kind of hard to see because Hawaii lava flow hazard zone overlaps the emergency shelters. So what we can do is go here and move this layer up so it's visible. The other thing that we can do is go in here and we can select the transparency and make it more transparent. So the base map that's underneath the Hawaii lava flow hazard zone is visible. And there are all these options that we can do. We can again configure the pop-up as we want it to be. We can say, hey, we want to have a um, custom attribute display. We can have a list of attribute display. We can do all those things. But when we, we go to configure, this is already set. So there's a description and it, it has some information and again this information that's under that's within the curly bracket 
is the field that comes with the layer and that's another interesting thing about it if you go to the attribute table you can actually view the data here so we have severity codes severity reason description coverage photo and these are the information that will be shown on the map when you click let's close the attribute table there are other information available here as well that we can play with we can hide the legend if we want to remove it and things like that but for now let's save the map but one more thing before we save it let's say we want to make this more readable I would go to rename and I have the option of renaming it so it's more more readable to the users once I do that I can go to save and save my map I'll go to the test and give it a name let me call it Hawaii emergency this is a test map and I can say this map provides Hawaii lava floor region with shelters and then save the map now you can see the name has changed and this is a file that has say that has been saved in my document now if we wanted to share this map with friends or your co-worker you could go ahead and click on share and make it everyone public so that everyone who clicks on this link will be taken to this map you can copy this link and send it in the email or however way you want to share it so there we go we have we had a csv file that we added on the map we also took a layer from ArcGIS Online and added on the map viewer. We played around the options that's been provided to us and we also changed the symbology, the style, and we viewed the attribute table. That's all for now. Let's move on to the next lesson. Thank you.